Hello there sharks, it's Coach Greg. Welcome back to the rink. And today we are going to focus on forechecking. And we're going to look at a few ways that we can make our forecheck more effective. And when we have an effective forecheck, that means we're going to create turnovers and hopefully we'll take those turnovers and put them in the back of the net, the other team's net. Okay, so let's just watch this video once before we talk about it anymore. So this is a dump and chase forecheck. Here we go. Okay, so there you have it. In this video, the Sharks, we are the red team, all right? So right now, on the red team, F1, forward one, has the puck. F2 and F3 are his line mates. Now you can see right now, oh, let's just move it back to the beginning. You can see right now that F1 is by himself. And as he carries the puck into the neutral zone, he has no passing options and he's encountering trouble. He's encountering players on the other team trying to take the puck from him. So versus trying to stick handle around all these guys himself, the best choice is likely to dump the puck deep into the other team's end and then chase it down using our offensive zone forecheck. Now, when we forecheck in the offensive zone, our goal is to put pressure on the defenseman from the other team who's playing the puck. And we want to force that defenseman to make a hasty decision a quick rushed decision and we want to impact his choices perhaps a better word is limit his choices by getting in the way of his passing lanes by having our sticks down and active in the passing lanes and also having our bodies there moving our feet so let's see what happens number one realizes oh I'm really jammed up here. I'm just going to dump the puck in. Now, as soon as he dumps the puck in, each one of our forwards has a different responsibility. The puck carrier who's just dumped the puck in, F1, his job is to exert pressure on the puck and on the defenseman that's going to try to retrieve that puck. F2 needs to support F1 in pressuring that puck. Two flies on poo. You remember that from last year? Well, that still holds true. We still want two on the puck. But here's the tricky part, or perhaps not tricky. This is how we're just refining it a bit this year for you guys. We want two kids on the puck. But we don't want you on top of one another battling each other necessarily. We want you guys to work together smartly to gain that puck. And now F3, if the puck stays over on the far side, they are going to have to end up in the train tracks. All right. So again, another theory from last year, the train tracks still holds true. So let's see what happens. The puck goes in the corner. Now, important to note that when we dump the puck in, that's what we want to do. We want the puck to stay in the corner. We don't want it to wrap around and go behind the net. When that happens, we're actually giving the advantage to the other team is they can pick up that puck, swing behind the net, and start transitioning out of their zone. We want to keep it in that corner. And then what we want to do is we want to control where that defenseman on the other team goes with the puck. So let's see what happens here. As you can see, F3 is moving into the train tracks. F2 is coming to support F1 on the forecheck. And F1 is forechecking that defenseman. But what he's doing, you'll notice, is he's taking the inside lane. So he's closer to the goal than the defenseman. And the reason why he's doing that is because he wants to force the defenseman to go up the boards. And he's blocking the pass to go behind the net. You know how much defensemen love to get that puck do a quick little turn and then scamper off the other way to try to skate all the way down the ice. Well, our positioning here of F1 means that's not going to happen. 
what he's actually doing is he's pressuring the defenseman back to an area where F1 knows he has a teammate supporting him. And look what happens. That pressure and limiting the options of that defenseman ends up with him turning the puck over to our F2. And because F3 has been reading and reacting the play, which is his job, F3 is moving his feet, identified that now his team has the puck, and he's ready with a stick on the ice to put the puck in the net. That is a beautiful forecheck. Now, that's a perfect forecheck. It's not always going to work that way. But that's what we're going for. Ideally, dumping the puck in, keeping it on the one side, pressuring the defenseman with inside-out pressure, forcing him to move the puck up the boards, having two of our players on the puck, turning it over, hitting our open man who is in the train tracks. Okay?